The vagus nerve is the 10th cranial nerve out of a total of 12. Vagus in Latin means wanderer, which it certainly does in the body. It is the longest of the nerves and innervates almost every, every system of the body, mainly background functions that are involuntary and unconscious, including but not limited to heart and breathing rate, swallowing and digestion. So, unlike the popular saying, it's a good thing that what happens in vagus does not stay in vagus. The vagus nerve has both sensory and motor functions. It starts in the medulla, traveling down to the side of the skull via the auricular branch, which receives sensory information from the ears. The vagus nerve receives sensory information from the external ear and auditory canal. It also has some role in taste sensation. It provides special sensory innervation to the tongue and epiglottis. Traveling down the neck, it divides into internal and external branches. Towards the neck and thorax, we get to cardiac and tracheal branches. The tracheal branch causes constriction of the bronchi. The laryngeal nerve prevents food from being aspirated into the trachea and bifurcates at the mediastinum to the ligamentum arteriosum and the subclavian artery. The esophageal plexus consists of a branch of the vagus nerve. This innervates the diaphragm and abdominal viscera. The vagus nerve tells the diaphragm to contract, allowing air to be drawn into the lungs. It also causes the bronchi to constrict while the body is in a state of rest. The right vagus branch innervates the sinoatrial node, the body's internal pacemaker. It also innervates the atrioventricular node, which slows the signal for the contraction, allowing the ventricles to fill up with blood before contracting. The vagus nerve uses the neurotransmitter acetylcholine to lower the heart rate, playing an important role in maintaining homeostasis. Stimulation of the cardiac branch of the vagus nerve causes bradycardia. The vagus nerve also has parts in the celiac, mesenteric, and myenteric plexuses, aiding in GI tract mobility. At the stomach, the vagus nerve branches into the liver, gallbladder, spleen, pancreas, and pylorus, the connection between the stomach and duodenum. At the hypogastric plexus, the large and small intestines are innervated. The vagus nerve aids in digestion in two ways. It innervates the muscular wall of the stomach and causes contractions, which physically break down and move food. It also monitors chemical levels, regulating nutrient breakdown and absorption. Gastroparesis is a disorder also known as delayed gastric emptying. It occurs when the vagus nerve is damaged due to illness or injury. The vagus nerve cannot signal the stomach muscles to contract, and food stays in the stomach instead of being pushed into the small intestine. Symptoms include abdominal pain, bloating, loss of appetite, and acid reflux. Bowel and bladder. The vagus nerve stimulates the bowel and bladder release when the body is in a state of rest. To test for a malfunction in the vagus nerve, we can perform the following exam. Have your patient open their mouth and say ah. Use a tongue depressor and observe the soft palate and uvula. If the uvula falls to one side, this would indicate a lesion in the contralateral side. Cold water showers will increase vagus nerve activation, decreasing your body's sympathetic response and increasing your parasympathetic response as it adjusts to the temperature. Mild exercise can stimulate the activation of the vagus nerve by increasing the body's metabolic rate. Deep, slow breathing and meditation can increase vagus nerve response through increasing baroreceptor sensitivity, which detect lower blood pressure, which goes in turn with lower heart rate. This results in lowering the sympathetic response and increasing the parasympathetic response of the body.